Actually, you're on mute. A very warm good afternoon to all of you. I am Sakshi, welcoming you all on behalf of eMobility Plus and First View Group to our webinar on optimizing performance and profitability through smart fleet management. Before we dive into this session, let me give you a quick overview of what to expect from today's webinar. As we are aware, in today's era, of evolving technology and dynamic transportation needs, the role of fleet management has taken on a new level of significance. This webinar will help in discovering the transformative power of smart fleet management solutions that leverage cutting edge technologies to enhance operational efficiency and boost profitability. Explore how data-driven decision-making, predictive maintenance models, Dynamic route optimization and resource utilization strategies can empower your fleet for success. Our, our panel experts here will shed light on the seamless integration of the Internet of Things, telematics, and vehicle connectivity that drives responsive operations and swift decision making. We will uncover the innovative ways these technologies contribute to reducing vehicle downtime, maximizing efficiency, and optimizing resource utilization. I would like to make a small announcement here that we will be having a Q&A session where all the attendees can ask their questions to the speakers. There's a Q&A a box where you can post those questions. And our speakers will take up those once we conclude our panel discussion. So uh, before we start our session today, I would also like to take this opportunity to invite you to our, our upcoming event on India Fleet Show 2023, which will happen on 27 September at Radisson Blue Outer Ring Road, Bangalore. Join us and stay ahead in the world of fleet management. Now, without further ado, I would request my team to play the commercial video. so much team for playing that video it's time uh, to go on to our panel discussion much awaited webinar today on optimizing performance and profitable profitability through smart fleet management allow me to introduce the esteemed panel for today we have with us mr sarang deshpande from mero mobility mr gaurav gupta from one click telematics mr bharga from interseller Mr. Seva Prasad from EV Masterclass and Mr. Ankit Avasti, who is the principal and head of the new mobility practice, Numera Research Institute Consulting and Solutions, will be the moderator for today. I welcome all our speakers on board. Over to you, uh, Mr. Avasti. Thank you so much, Shakshi, uh, for introducing the event and all the panelists. A very warm welcome to all our panelists today. And more importantly, to all the guests who've logged in today, taking time out and uh, hope for an interesting, engaging conversation today. So a quick introduction about myself. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Ankit Avasi, Principal and Head, New Mobility Practice at NRI, 
that's Nomura Research Institute Consulting and Solutions. We are a Japanese consulting firm established over 50 years ago in 1958. In India, we are just 11 years old and work extensively in the automotive domain, especially in the emerging areas of electric, telematics, etc. I am privileged to get this opportunity to moderate a session with emerging industry leaders in the world of automotive and telematic solution. So since Shakshi has already kindly introduced all our panelists today, I will skip that part and directly jump into the topic for discussion today, for which I know all of you have been eagerly awaited. Since we have multiple panelists today, what I intend to do is put across some questions to each of the panelists particularly, and then invite other panelists to comment and share their thoughts on it. Meanwhile, all our guests who are tuned tune in and listening to us, I would request you to please keep typing in your questions and I will request the panel to take those questions at the end. If possible, we may even take some of the questions during the discussion itself. So to begin with, let me first post uh, today's question to Mr. Gaurav. Gaurav, I hope uh, I am audible to you. Yeah. Gaurav, uh, you know, uh, thank you for taking the first question. It's quite brave. And my first question to you for today is, in your opinion, why and how smart fleet management is a significant in today's transportation landscape? And how technology has transformed the traditional fleet operations? Yeah, hi, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, before uh, moving to the you know, answers, I would like to first you know, explain what is a smart fleet actually. So we all, we all know that we have a fleet, where there is a fleet management. Then what is the smart fleet actually? Okay, so a smart fleet is something which is you know, connected to the internet and which gives us the data. So based on that data, we can make lots of decisions, right? So, so this is, uh, so now the question is how a smart fleet management is you know, making changes in our you know, day to day uh, life or this thing. So there are lots of things uh, which are changing. Like, first of all is like cost effective. Okay. So the cost by, by running a fleet, there are lots of cost involved, right? Fuel cost, driver co uh, operation cost, right? Compliances cost. So by using the smart fleet, we can reduce lots of cost. Then there is a driver management. Uh, so by using the smart fleet, we can use the driver management. There are real time tracking. There are route optimization. There are uh, uh, you know, pre uh, defined uh, compliances. There are uh, health monitoring. All those things we can do by uh, having this smart fleet. So, and how, how the technology is changing it, like suppose I will take some examples uh, with this smart fleet, there are telematics uh, devices, right? When you fit the telematic devices, these telematic devices are like in the normal language, in our day-to-day -day language, we call them the GPS devices, okay? So these telematic devices, when we fit it, uh, fit to the uh, any vehicle, we get lots of data. Data like we are getting the real-time location, we are getting their engine parameters like current current ignition, their health parameter, their distance traveled, their fuel uh, used. And uh, so based on those parameters, suppose if I take a distance, so dis based on the distance, uh, sorry, let's take first the important parameter uh, location. So based on the location parameter, so now we know the real time location of the all the fleets. Okay. So based on the real time location, now we can make lots of decision, right? Uh, so if I have to plan some uh, load, unload, like we can plan based on their real time location when the vehicle is about to reach so how much uh, load we should uh, be ready with so all those things and then it comes with the fuel management so in the fleet uh, in the fleet management or in the transport uh, uh, business there is a very big pro challenge for the transporters are the fuel uh, theft and fuel management right so by using these devices and a smart fleet you can have the real time you know, fuel monitoring and you can have the data filling and data drilling uh, alerts and reports also so you can manage your fleet uh, fuel very optimally 
then there are route optimization so suppose your daily your vehicle has a running of you know maybe 500 600 kilometers of one fleet you can optimize those you know uh, fleet you optimize your fleet by making the route optimization you have to go from point 1a to b there are multiple numbers of way to go there but by using the technology right you have the data your vehicle has been going there for many days you can based on that data you can you know optimize the best route which takes the less less time to reach there right so this is how i understand the technology is changing the the you know fleet management system right right uh, thank you so much for that gaurav i think you were very comprehensive and uh, you have uh, highlighted number of solutions driver management fuel management route optimization uh, all of these uh, helping in uh, decision making yeah. and i i will touch a bit more about how tel telematics is enabling uh, swift decision making uh, subsequently uh, but before i move ahead you know uh, maybe i'd like to call on bhargav uh, to come in and maybe share his hub uh, pardon me uh, his point of view and this because uh, bhargav you were chatting yesterday and you very uh, nicely put across that the entire fleet uh, ecosystem can probably be considered in three elements which is the vehicle the driver and the hub and the solutions which gaurav you know has been talking about you know sort of falls within that so bhargav your take on you know again the question have been same how technology is transforming this traditional fleet and what does this fleet really comprise of sure uh, thanks for that ankit uh, so first of all i'd like to uh, welcome everybody uh, who's joined us on this webinar uh, and i'd like to give a brief introduction about myself and the company as well uh, i'm bhargav i head the business at intelicart telematics uh, so we're a data solutions company that's been operating in the mobility and automotive domain for about eight and a half years today. And we predominantly cater to the electric vehicle ecosystem as such today. Uh, having said that, I'll touch upon the smart uh, fleet management part. So like you uh, rightly said, uh, if we break down which are the key components of you know managing a fleet as such, uh, one is, of course, the core element of your fleet is, of course, your vehicles, which is which becomes your asset. And the second element is your driver, who's extremely important and important stakeholder for the success of managing your fleets in a, in a really optimized way. And third is, of course, all your hubs. Where are all your hubs located and how are you managing these hubs? So how, how do we use uh, this buzzword IoT in terms of managing your fleets? So I'll break it down into three layers. At a very uh, primary layer, what you see is your asset visibility, traceability, and you know theft control, etc., where you can remotely control your asset. Uh, so getting that visibility helps locate your asset in a in a very real time way. And second, of course, comes down to your vehicle health. Is your vehicle performing uh, to the specifications? Is it being op utilized properly? So on and so forth. And the third, of course, who's the key stakeholder here is how do you really manage the driver? Uh, how do you ensure that the driver is getting the best out of your vehicle as as also contributing to the top line as far as possible? Uh, so when we talk about decision making right now, if we look at if we break down the fleet into these three components where at a hub level now you your all your fleet managers need to understand, hey, in any given hub, how many assets are currently available over there out of that, how many are in a good condition to deploy them for top line activities. And number three, of course, is the health of the vehicle. Are they maintained well, the status of it, so on and so forth. So this helps them understand, hey, which are available for dispatch, which needs certain maintenance uh, work. And if I take an electric vehicle, for example, we can also look at how many vehicles will be ready. They might not have enough charge to begin with. Uh, we help, typically we help our users to understand these kind of insights at a hub level. Uh, and when it comes down to the driver now, uh, typically all these drive, all your assets are typically shared as such. Uh, there are multiple drivers using the same asset. Now, how do you ensure a certain amount of compliance is maintained? Some kind of hygiene is maintained within the driver ecosystem. So this is precisely where, uh, again, the underlying data will help the driver. Uh, we, we do see a lot of end user organizations roll out, you know, incentivization programs for their drivers where 
good driver behavior is uh, kind of awarded with uh, certain incentives and bad drivers are looked at and they're coached to improve their compliance levels as such. And uh, the third thing, of course, is the vehicle itself. At the vehicle level, now you have uh, several different aspects that you can look at. Uh, number one, are you deploying all your assets in a uniform way? For instance, very typically you see in a fleet, some assets are overutilized, some are underutilized, very seldom they are optimally utilized. So using the data that comes from the vehicles, looking at all their historical data, etc., when you really, really crunch down those numbers, you'll be able to understand how exactly you're deploying these vehicles uh, across the lifetime of this vehicle. Now, we help our end users, for example, deploy uh, certain uh, optimized strategies. Uh, that is from a utilization standpoint. And then when you talk about performance, now with uh, technology like IoT, you can delve deep into the components and the subcomponents of inner vehicle. You can understand if their performance is up to grade. You can manage warranties. Uh, and of course, when it comes down to the overall fleet operations as well, uh, like Gauro rightly mentioned, there are a lot of compliances that need to be maintained. Uh, by automating a lot of this, uh, by making an organization data-driven rather, you will eliminate all of these administrative procedures and personnel that are involved, and you can seamlessly automate and move towards uh, a data-driven way of really, really utilizing your fleet and managing your fleet as such. So broadly, these are the points, uh, uh, I, I, I believe, uh, where people can leverage using the power of IoT. Got it. Uh, thank you so much, Bhargav. I think this was, again, very comprehensive. And uh, I was glad you also touched upon the aspect of uh, automation, and especially on compliance. And that's uh, such a big burden, which is there on organizations. And since you also mentioned that you are extensively working in the EV space, well, I know this topic is in general for fleet. Uh, I think we would all agree that in today's day and age, uh, especially when we call smart fleet, I think one thought that comes in everyone's mind is EVs, uh, especially in the last mile mobility, we are seeing a very strong traction from their side. And on that note, you know, uh, maybe I'll uh, invite Saran from uh, Mero Mobility uh, to come in. And uh, Saran, uh, you know, my question to you now, because... Uh, Bhargav also spoke about how data can be leveraged. So let me ask uh, this to you, right? Uh, how is data analytics being utilized to optimize fleet performance? And what sort of data-driven decision-making you know, uh, impacts like route planning, fuel efficiency, maintenance, that both Gaurav and Bhargav had touched upon? And all of this, uh, maybe A, in the general terms, and B, if specifically from EV perspective, how does this vary? If you could shed some line, light upon that, please. Sure. Thank you, Ankit. So I think I would like to start with unpacking a little bit about what, what it means when we say optimize. Because optimize is with respect to some goal. And when we say fleet, the applications of fleet are uh, varied and uh, diverse. You could have fleet management required in intercity logistics. You could have fleet management required in urban logistics in urban passenger management, uh, urban passenger transport, or uh, even like uh, last mile services like scooter sharing, right? So fleet management is a very vast topic. And when we say optimize fleet management, the requirements of each of these is slightly different. And that's why when we think about the solutions of what we can do with data analytics is dependent on the use case. So in terms of Optimizing fuel efficiency is something that's common across the board. Everyone wants to minimize the usage of fuel and uh, their operational expense per unit of value provided. But if we uh, really start to think about what applications we are working on and really think about what is the next cutting edge thing that we can do with the data that we have, then things become more interesting. So in the case of, let's say, urban transport, and uh, shared mobility systems, which we work on predominantly. We work with small capacity vehicles that are meant for passenger transport applications. And fleet management for us is in providing high throughput for these services. It's not about transporting goods. It's not about uh, the dead mileage or uh, the 
downtime in, in the sense of the vehicles having to wait for loading and loading, but it's more about how effectively we can provide for passenger transport. But if we think about the same strategies that we applied for logistics operations and then try to adopt them into passenger transport, it doesn't work very well. So that's why when we think about optimization, it should all start from our use case, which is most often going to be very specific and then break it down into how we can use the data for achieving our goals. Now, once we have our goals set, then we can decide what data to collect. That's a very important part of uh, being able to be lean. Otherwise, we can collect a lot of data and do nothing with it and at the end. So that's the first thing that we also try to think about. What is the set of data that we actually need to make certain decisions and what type of frequencies we might need it at or you know, what fidelity of data we might need. The next question is, what can we do with that data? As you asked, what type of data-driven decision-making we can do with uh, route planning or fuel efficiency, vehicle maintenance? And I think I can touch upon most for uh, the aspects of route planning and uh, fuel efficiency and downtime management. So uh, I'll give you an example of what we try to do with shared mobility fleets is we try to monitor how the vehicles are moving around. And instead of using IoT-based devices that need to be externally installed, we try to work with the sensors that are available in the driver's phones themselves. So with GPS, with uh, IMUs that are part of the low-cost sensor framework in modern-day smartphones, we're also able to achieve good results in terms of identifying whether a vehicle is uh, parking or whether it's idling or uh, it's uh, you know, at a certain stage of its life cycle in terms of uh, the operations. So route planning is now, I think there's a lot of, uh, uh, it's quite a formal and quite a, a well extended field. And we have a lot of tools available for route planning in terms of formulating optimization. It's now no longer that complex. And the burden now is on us on how we can utilize all of these tools to get to the next level. It's no longer just about fleet management being okay there's a possibility of collecting data let's collect a lot of data and try to do something basic with it such as identifying patterns and uh, dealing with our operations and streamlining our operations there's actually the possibility of changing the way we do operations in the first place and improve our throughputs uh, be it for logistics be it for uh, intercity or be it for deliveries for amazon and flipkart or for passenger transport Uh, thank you so much, Saran. Uh, I think uh, I'm really glad you uh, brought up the topic of goal setting. I think uh, more often than not, especially in technology development, that's uh, I think that's the biggest grouse that people have, the changing goal settings. And more importantly, I think given the kind of uh, capabilities that we have today, I think data collection is no longer a challenge. Yes. It's probably identifying which data and accurately getting that data and being able to make sense of that data is what really is the relevant part. Uh, you know, let, let me uh, probably call uh, Mr. Shiva in this. So he's director at EV Masterclass. So uh, I think he would be much more aligned on understanding on these elements of uh, changing goalposts and a kind of data. So uh, Mr. Shiva Prasad, could you share? Yeah. Your thoughts uh, on this topic? Uh, yes, thanks, Ankit. Uh, 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 good afternoon, all. Uh, before uh, dwelling into the topic, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Siva Pesa, director of uh, director of the EV Masterclass. Um, what uh, actually we are doing is, uh, uh, like Bhargav said, and also Sarang is into EV space, and um, Kauru Gupta is also given in his aspects into that one. We are nurturing. The, uh, the talent uh, to take up these uh, uh, fleet management with uh, talent uh, from a uh, low class, uh, uh, low cities or low towns areas. And uh, we are um, enabling those people uh, with these modern technologies. Um, and we are uh, bringing those people at our uh, centers and we are nurturing their knowledge in the EVs. And um, uh, by uh, 
what we faced a major problem in all these uh, electric vehicles or the other uh, uh, vehicles and in the fleet management is it, they are not having a proper understanding of these um, uh, vehicles vehicle architecture how to use the vehicle uh, what what data what 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 type of data they need and what, based on the data how optimization they can they can plan their routes and everything that that entire aspect uh, the the riders or the uh, fleet management people are not having anything but uh, by in our ev master class we are trying to nurture those all those uh, people about the about all these aspects and um, uh, and we are providing a, a, these people to a fleet management uh, uh, providers also fleet who are, who are all, all having the uh, fleet operators we are providing that okay from ev master class these are the people available these people know how to use uh, the relevant data and these people know how to plan their routes and these people know how to optimize their performance in deliveries of that one so that's how this data whatever the data which sarang is uh, uh, dividing into different different sections that data we can incorporate or that data we can easily explain to these people so that the route optimization or uh, the performance of the uh, fleet and also the uh, profitability of the fleet can be uh, 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 can be useful for can, can be used for that one. So the EV masterclass at our end, we are doing this activity. And as rightly said, um, the data whatever we are taking uh, the, the the data which we are taking from the vehicle or from the um, or from the devices in the uh, vehicles is very much important in order to um, perfectly planning the uh, routes perfectly optimizing the performance of usage of the vehicle and perform and uh, up and uh, perfectly using whether that user is getting any profit profit today or for the organization level what will be the profitability of maintaining that smart fleet and everything so that that entire information is uh, very much needed in this um, in the in this up in this uh, ever growing fleet management uh, because if you see uh, last three to four years before last three to four years there is no uh, fleet management exactly but the covid because of the covid we are having a very much an extraordinary and also an exponential growth in the fleet management itself and uh, in order to optimize we use use this fleet uh, fleet management and also get a profitability this entire data is very much needed at our end so this is our perspective and uh, the people who are in this business of this fleet management uh, should also be well equipped with that data and will uh, and also be well trained in that understanding that data uh, that's that's my uh, uh, perspective in this thank you thank you so much shiva and uh, while we have spoken a lot around you know the kind of uh, of course you know data and the kind of various kind of solutions uh, including, uh, you know, preventive maintenance and route optimization, and probably, you know, uh, I'd like to go into deeper in each of the solutions because I think a lot of our uh, B2B uh, viewers would probably be interested in that. But before I get into the solutioning part, uh, let me maybe take a common denominator topic, uh, which uh, Mr. Shiva just touched upon, which was in terms of profitability or maybe in terms of ROI, uh, right? So, and, uh, you know, let me invite Raghav uh, to first comment on this. And this is probably a topic I'd like to hear from each and every one of you, because I think this is central to any solutioning and any requirement, because at the end of the day, uh, all the solution, unless until it is providing a clear ROI, uh, the solution remains a theoretical solution. So, uh, Bhargav, the question to you is, how can businesses quantify the ROI or the return on investment from adopting smart fleet management solutions? I mean, I'm saying smart fleet solutions, you know, it encompasses all the various kind of solutions that you, Gaurav, Saran, Shiva have touched upon. But at the you know, overall level, how does it really boil down to ROI or, and or profitability? Um, sure, this I'm sure is a very uh, uh, important matter for every single uh, fleet owner or fleet operator, I would say. Uh, so number one, uh, the way 
we need to look at this is how how first is we we need to understand what is the problem statement within the fleet management uh, or the fleet operator as such uh, where exactly are they expensing most amount of money today where they feel there's a lot of pilferage there's a lot of inefficiency so on and so forth i'll walk you through this uh, with a couple of examples so uh, we worked with an international public transport uh, uh, organization uh, where their core uh, issue or the core challenge rather the core expense was on insurance premiums uh, they used to uh, shell out a lot of uh, top money for getting insurance and this was all usage based insurance uh, simply because it's related to how well the driver uses the vehicle and based on that is how your insurance premiums are calculated so when we walked in there that was the key element their focus was on hey how do i get my driver behavior to improve and how do i reduce my uh, insurance premiums as such so the way we go about it, uh, we went about that was first understand the nitty gritties hey they had somebody called a safety manager now the safety manager is all about uh, adhering getting the drivers to adhere to certain compliance levels uh, getting them to follow certain uh, hygiene rules etc so when we went in there we introduced a driver coaching and a driver training platform where uh, for the first 3 months uh, x amount of money was expensed in deploying this particular solution and then what was the result of it uh, over the over the next 6 months we had certain tangible results for example we reduced their accidents by 10% so that quantified a certain amount of money they were already expensing and number 2 uh, because their drivers were scored very thoroughly uh, using you know state of the art sensors these are not sensors just just come with a telematics unit these are external sensors as well uh, we were able to now pull those drivers into good average and bad and the focus was predominantly on the poor on the poor pool as such with this what happened was the only goal for the fleet operator over there was hey can i move my bad drivers into the average and the good pool that resulted in you know them getting a group insurance uh, policy as such where they were able to save 40% of their insurance uh, premium value and when we looked at the overall payback period right for what they expensed and when they got all their money back for whatever they've invested it was less than 6 months so typically when we speak of roi or getting to profitability etc it completely depends on how deep um, the iot solution is adopted within the user organization uh, how how articulate they are with their problem statements how focused they are on resolving these different problem statements of course uh, data getting data different kinds of data is not a core challenge uh, at least today but how well you slice and dice this data and how uh, uh, how simple and how much how much you can dump down the data to the end users so that they can <clears throat> excuse me they can go on, go on about their daily chores and jobs as such so it typically depends on how well adopted it is within the cross functional teams of that organization um that's uh, fairly uh, well put bhargav although a little on the more diplomatic side i would say uh, but but yeah i think that's that is bang on correct so uh, you know gorav shiva sarang uh, any one of you if you'd like to go next because i think this is the most pertinent uh, question which then eventually enables uh, any deployment of any other solutions if you would care to talk about any particular experience or the kind of numbers that your uh, partners or uh, users can expect to see yeah uh, i would like to uh, take up this uh, a small example uh, i want to tell uh, this ev perspective uh, in a, it, it is for a uh, two wheeler fleet uh, management uh, there is a company uh, which we are working with that company that company is having already 2000 to 3000 Uh, vehicles in their fleet, two-wheeler vehicles for the deliveries of Amazon, Flipkart, Grofers, and uh, uh, Tata One MG and medicines deliveries and everything. So uh, recently we had uh, uh, recently they that fleet uh, management system or the fleet operator is planning to take electric vehicles into their fleet. Uh, so instead of petrol and uh, uh, petrol vehicles, they have introduced um, these electric vehicles uh, into their fleet. and uh, we have supplied uh, batteries to them 
uh, and batteries to them. And there is a cost analysis and also the cost optimization across the vehicle side and also the user side and the riders and everything. Right. Uh, we, uh, we, we got uh, studied about that EV fleet. If we take entire fleet management in the EVs and uh, they take a vehicles from outside and uh, uh, give a battery from local suppliers or the vehicle with the entire thing from outside itself. So different, different scenarios. Uh, there was a brainstorming session where it happened, and the and out of this out of this brainstorming session, uh, the the optimization solution what they found is the best solution, the best way of adopting that electric vehicles fleet management in this two wheeler segment is get the vehicles without battery from outside. Like let us say I am staying in Hyderabad, so. We will take all the vehicles from uh, uh, vehicles from into the into the Hyderabad without batteries, and find a local partner who can supply this battery system, because battery is the one which has to be uh, charge discharge charge discharge has to be will be happening in this EV fleet, and uh, arrive at an optimized solution such that the vehicle cost and also the battery bat battery cost and along with the vehicle service vehicle cost initial payment and also the operating cost of these things is taken into the picture and optimize the um what i can say the specification of the vehicle so let us say for example uh, we are having a two-wheeler ev like uh, uh, two-wheeler ev with uh, uh, 48 volt system uh, 60 ah battery pack which can give an uh, or the uh, uh, not 60 ah 48 volt system around uh, uh, 40 50 ah battery pack which gives a mileage of uh, 100 kilometers range is the vehicle which they have taken but after studying of all these things and also uh, put the entire analytics and data that has been driven for this entire thing with this battery pack they found that instead of having an 48 volts 50 ah single battery pack uh, they, they can take an 48 volts 25 ah two battery packs can be given to each rider so that that rider can go up to for, uh, in one day. In one day, they can uh, they can go a deliveries of more than twenty deliveries per rider with these two battery packs, so that they can cover more than one hundred sixty to one hundred seventy kilometers range. So this entire exercise that has been taken uh, has been studied and found that uh, instead of having an a bigger battery pack with more mileage in an electric vehicle, a two wheeler for a rider. In, they can give and uh, to optimize or the smaller battery packs in a, either two uh, maximum is two only because one battery pack will be used in the vehicle while the other battery pack is in the charging stage and that charged battery can be used and the, and this battery pack can be put it in the charging stage so that the route optimization and also the delivery optimization can be happen uh, uh, can happen in this one this is one of the case study uh, which we have which we have involved and also that entire uh, fleet fleet operator is now operating maximum they are converting all the existing vehicles to electric vehicles which they find that it is a profitable business in order to having a specific and optimized solution in the ev for a delivery uh, for a delivery in the delivery aspect and also this vehicle is having that uh, uh, iot device to track and trace of these vehicles and, and the next study which we are going to do is uh, the same uh, vehicles. Uh, we are tracking the all the different electric vehicle parameters as well, like like battery battery side. What are the what are the what are the battery issues and uh, water side? What are the motor issues and everything? So further data will give a further um, optimization of usage of these uh, vehicles and further optimization of deliveries of these uh, um, uh, del uh, deliveries of these uh, of the goods such that. Uh, the riders will be in the profitable business as well as the fleet operators or the fleet owners are also in the profitable business in that this is one of the case study which i want to showcase uh, thank you Shiva, for sharing that that's that's so amazing to hear that and in fact while we were focusing predominantly maybe on the uh, usage side optimization i think uh, this was more uh, or not more but also towards the product uh, side and you know this is phenomenal to hear how uh, you know the data gathered and this experience helped them figure out on the product side which eventually led to their uh, fleet operation management and of course as you mentioned uh, subsequently uh, driving more 
retrofitment is that's the case here shiva uh, no this is not for the retrofitment this we studied in okay. pure electric vehicles only retrofitment yeah, maybe okay. yeah pure electric vehicles retrofitment okay. uh, will be a little bit more cost involved in that one uh, maybe the existing vehicles maybe we need to study in that uh, in that aspect it is it is in pipeline in our studies this is also in our pipelines uh, got going forward yeah now you mentioned they are going to make more vehicles electric so i thought maybe there's an element of retrofitment but i now understand that's probably uh, procuring of more evs yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. that's 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 uh, excellent uh, shiva and again you know i'll say this uh, i mentioned earlier that while the topic was just on smart fleet but you know invariably through our discussions what is very clearly emerging is that the trend is towards uh, electric smart fleet correct uh, and uh, that's that's the future gaurav uh, if you'd like to go next and particularly talk about how users can see this roi how can they validate it and what is that you know uh, key differentiator or you know key winning point for them to figure out that yes you know my additional investment or belief in a smart uh, fleet management solution is going to yield higher results for me gaurav and then saran same question right i think it's just so pertinent that i want each and every one of you to really share some insight some anecdote about how you are convincing people and what is on ground reality of the roi scene Over to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, thank you, thank you, Ankit. Fine. So, uh, like uh, Bhargava, Shiva, and Sarang has mentioned about the data collection and uh, and uh, so and uses of those data actually. Okay. So the important part part comes what way we use the data. That data itself tell us about the ROI actually. Okay. So suppose if I talk about uh, EV industry itself. So we start getting the you know battery uh, data suppose. So battery data we uh, we need to use the by using the device we can get the battery data. Now battery has a life cycle of charging and discharging. So by using this data we can see like how many times it has been charged, how many you know mileage it has been driven driven, and what was the top speed or average speed in the life cycle life cycle and all. Okay. so by using that data we can you know we can uh, you, we can come to a decision that that where, what are the area where we have to improve the battery okay and so so which gives us the you know better uh, roi in that so by using that data suppose uh, and in in terms of uh, operation suppose by using the data we can uh, you know uh, find out the Uh, pre preventive maintenance actually okay suppose by using that data uh, we have a vehicle engine data so engine suppose there is a engine which is giving which is about to give some issue right that date that so engine gives us some kind of you know error code so if we get to know that error code by using uh, the smart fleet devices we can take a preventive you know action before it breaks down on the way suppose it is taking a load and going to somewhere and now the vehicle gets break down it so it has a very big cost for you know uh, uh, fixing that vehicle moving the load from uh, one place to another place and all so by using that data we can you know take a preventive uh, action before before you know uh, going to a big big problem or big accident may happen suppose there is a nowadays there is an example of you know tire uh, tire pressure management system also comes as a part of you know smart fleet so lots of accident happens because of the over pressure of the tires or the under pressure of the tires by using those uh, uh, sensor data also we can uh, you know uh, avoid these kind of incidents so this is what i i wanted to tell about the data how how and how can we use the data which can which, which can give us the better roi Uh, yes so in continuation to gaurav's points i think i had three things in mind one was uh, regarding the example that shiva gave about 
how to think about it. So the question is, if you think about ROI, you're essentially thinking about it as an intervention. But if you think about it as as being part and parcel of your product, then the thought process around ROI is going to change. So if you think, let's say you have a business that has been running for X years and now you're thinking about smart fleet management as an intervention to your existing uh, service or existing product. The thought process around ROI is very different versus if you're trying to develop things from the ground up and think about smart fleet uh, or EV smart fleet for that matter as being the only viable solution, then your thought process around ROI is going to be much different. The other point is, uh, as Gaurav was mentioning about uh, tire pressure monitoring or maintenance systems, I have been in discussions with a couple of companies who do that, uh, not just monitoring, but active maintenance while the vehicle is moving. So the ROI in those senses is actually not just coming from the fact that the vehicle is now on the road always, but it is also preventing uh, accidents, it is preventing uh, loss of time, it is preventing loss of goods. And in terms of the investment that you would do in a system like that, an IPPMS or a tire pressure maintenance system, although the upfront cost would be higher the long term or over the lifetime of the vehicle, the kind of uh, service life cycle you can expect from the vehicle and the added confidence of the driver is going to be very essential in terms of thinking about the ROI. And the third is something uh, on a slightly different tangent. If you're thinking about ROI from a business's perspective, as in a market, you can imagine that there are a lot of different players who are trying to do similar things. Let's say uh, a lot of different companies are trying to operate smart fleets for urban logistics, for example. Then, of course, there's going to be competition. Of course, there's going to be a certain level of mismatch between supply and demand. And when that happens, smart fleet can actually enable optimizing across different operators as well. And uh, in India, smart city, uh, the smart cities mission, smart city bodies across India are interested in those types of solutions as well, where uh, not only thinking from the operator's perspective, but from a macro perspective, where already there are so many different types of players, let's say a lot of operators who help Swiggy Zomato fleets to deliver food or to deliver pharmacy uh, items or to deliver Amazon Flipkart packages, a lot of the fleet will be common across all of these different use cases. And then how do different operators work together to actually achieve long-term ROI with the same set of assets is something that is that will probably come up as we expand this arena of smart fleet management. Because depending on the demand, there's always going to be a certain cap to how many vehicles we can deploy, be it electric or uh, gasoline. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sarang. And I think uh, I must truly appreciate the third aspect that you brought in. I think it's very understated, but uh, indeed, especially uh, in an environment we are talking about, about fleets and the world we are living in, it's not just purely an ROI from a company's perspective, but an overall uh, ecosystem. And uh, particularly there, I think EVs do have a very special role uh, to play in it and how we can overall uh, maximize. Uh, just a quick check. So on the time, we have about 11 minutes left. So while I did have a few more questions uh, originally planned for this conversation, uh, maybe let's take a quick break and see if we have any questions from our audience that we would like to address. I uh, already see we have a couple of questions. So maybe let's uh, take them up first. Meanwhile, uh, for all our viewers out there, uh, I hope you found the conversation so far uh, engaging and insightful. Please feel free to uh, ping in your uh, questions or comments that you may have for our panelists today. Uh, so let's take the first question, which was for uh, Gaurav. Oh, and it's there on the screen. Uh, thank you so much, team. Uh, the question is, what strategies are employed to proactively address vehicle maintenance issues? Hello. Yes, Garth, please go ahead. Correct. So as I was telling about the vehicle maintenance, uh, so first of all, uh, for vehicle maintenance, there are 
uh, scheduled uh, you know inspection first of all okay so in the in a, in a, it's a part of vehicle management system you must have first the scheduled maintenance of the vehicle so and so in that scheduled maintenance uh, by this uh, you will get a uh, alerts and reminders for the from the fleet management system that you have to do these kind of maintenance uh, activity for this vehicle based on the mileage means suppose one vehicle uh, is running uh, day, running around 500 km after that it's uh, any of the part has to be checked so those kind of you know maintenance uh, uh, activity or scheduler you can create in fleet management system and your system should remind you to you know follow th those kind of activities i i hope uh, the answer uh, this was regan uh, i hope uh, regan you were satisfied with the answer uh, please do follow up with additional comments in case you have Moving for towards the next question for Mr. Bhargav, uh, how much of the vehicle level data is actually looked at and analyzed and properly used by the fleet owners? I think this is pretty interesting. Right. Uh, so it's a very good good question, I would say, uh, simply because today, if you look at a fleet operator, uh, they'll have multiple tasks, multiple objectives uh, to cater to, and of course. Uh, they might not really have the bandwidth to sit and slice and dice the data. So I can really relate to this question. <clears throat> so number one, uh, it's fairly impossible for everybody to go at a vehicle level, look deep into uh, absolutely what's going on with that vehicle as such. But uh, where smart fleet management or rather the uh, appropriate type of software solutions that come in is, uh, where everything is insights driven uh, and people look at only exceptional or anomalous uh, incidents or reports as such. I'll take an example, right? Now, let's say you're a business owner, you, you own a particular fleet. Uh, for a business owner, what really he wants to know is, hey, how many vehicles have I procured? How many are plying on the ground? How many are in maintenance? So on and so forth. Now, get into the piece where... Uh, the ones that are not being utilized, that's where you delve deep and you have multiple sets of data where you can look at that particular category. And of course, when you go down to a lower level where you're actually operating as such, now this is where, uh, again, I go back to my previous thesis where if you break down at the vehicle level and the hub level, you will see trends emerging. Uh, there'll be a lot of intersections happening between the two data sets. And once it is, once it becomes like an exceptional reporting kind of mechanism where things have streamlined to a certain level, you only need to look at all the anomalies as such. For example, if you notice uh, that, hey, uh, in my hub, there is a, there are these sets of vehicles that have not been used at all for a week and nobody has really tagged it, whether it's operational or whether it is uh, under maintenance, so on and so forth. That gives grounds now for the uh, op fleet operations team to dive deeper, go do a physical inspection, perhaps to understand why is this not uh, optimized. And the next level of this, the uh, next layer of this would be where the tool will suggest that which vehicle needs to be deployed for what kind of tasks. And at the vehicle level as well, uh, there are a host of different things. There are a host of different things, but practically these uh, become extremely useful once they are delivered to the end user as an insight and things are categorized into different groups and uh, people can focus on a particular group which is more of a pet peeve for them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bhargav. Uh, this question was from Sachin. Again, I hope Sachin, the question has been answered. Uh, you know, Bhargav, while you're at it, since there's another question, mm -hmm. uh, I'll jump to that first and then come to the third question. So this is, uh, could you please elaborate how vehicle insurance could be optimized by adopting group insurance to drivers? Right. So uh, this, this goes uh, right back into, uh, actually, I can draw from our experience that we've used. Uh, so uh, these kind of group insurance and usage-based insurance is fairly nascent in the Indian uh, geography, at least. Uh, but practically, how you can go about doing this is, uh, if at the end of the day, if you look at it, if you have a particular kind of buying or bargaining power, uh, with an insurance company insurance companies today also 
are evolving in India as well, uh, where they want to give a slightly more incentivized model. So group insurance comes into place uh, where you have a significant amount of vehicles in your fleet and you have that purchasing power or bargaining power to uh, get that kind of a proposition from an insurance company. The way it will work is now you look at, uh, uh, you have your residual book value, right? You have your blue book that will tell you, hey, uh, X number of kilometers are driven based on that is your residual value of the vehicle comes down to this. Uh, but using IoT, right, you can do a lot of uh, proactive maintenance as well as predictive maintenance. Uh, it completely depends your type of vehicles that you have and the type of data that you're collecting. Let's say you go down really to the granular level where you're getting uh, diagnostic data from the core elements. If it's an electric vehicle, you're looking at the battery pack and the powertrain. If you're looking at a ICE vehicle, you're predominantly looking at the engine, which is the most expensive part of your vehicle. Once you go into that level of granularity, start getting that data points out. Now you will be able to showcase to these uh, insurance, uh, uh, these insurance companies about the health of the vehicle. Now you can go about scoring, giving a scoring mechanism to the health. Uh, for example, what we do uh, with a few of our users is we we drive uh, clutch algorithms for them. We deploy clutch algorithms from from to them because now the clutch is a significant uh, piece when you're looking at the entire drivetrain, right? If it's not utilized uh, properly, there's a lot of stress that goes on to the flywheel and then it propagates into the uh, different mechanical aspects of the vehicle as well, which in turn uh, leads to certain downtime and maintenance activities. Now, we use this scoring mechanism to prove to the insurance companies that, hey, this is how it's being utilized. These kind of uh, hygiene factors are being maintained. That we, we show a before and after and a continuous improvement of drivers who are not utilizing the vehicle. Rather, I'll put it fairly uh, uh, rashly driven vehicles, drivers, uh, how they have improved over a period of time. Uh, and this was the crux of, you know, uh, striking that particular group insurance deal for the for the uh, foreign entity that I was talking about. But the devil lies in the details. It depends completely uh, what kind of a fleet, what kind of vehicle you're using, and then what kind of negotiation you can have this with this insurance company. Uh, get that objective and set the tone for the contract. And once you've proven that there is this kind of improvement happening. Uh, by all means, it makes a lot of economic sense for all the stakeholders invol involved in that kind of a deal. Um, thank you so much, Bhargav. Uh, quick time check. We are just in last one minute of the scheduled session. So unlike the physical conferences, where it gets very easy to go over time, I think here we'll be more mindful of the timing. Uh, but of course, the benefit is also that this is being live streamed and you are all aware of the connects of these people over LinkedIn. So you can please feel free uh, to reach out to these members uh, to clarify your questions. By the way, uh, lucky for us, I've just got to go ahead uh, to extend for five more minutes so that we can cover all our questions uh, quickly. Right, so uh, we, let's take these last three questions, right? Uh, starting off uh, the one which we skipped and uh, I request any of the panelists to take it up. So this is about the last mile delivery costs approx 53% of total supply chain cost. How much of this can be reduced with the use of smart fleet of EVs? And of course, all optimization done. Any real time examples? Uh, yeah, about this one, I think uh, what he means is, uh, so the problem is, the first question is, what type of vehicle do you need to use for what type of delivery operation? And uh, since he's asking for a real-time example, what comes to mind is, uh, there's a system that Ford Mobility has uh, tried to develop. And what they're trying to do is design a full end-to-end -end multimodal system where from the hub, there's a set or specific type of electric vehicle that's used till the end point. And then at the end point, you have uh, either three wheelers or two wheelers or vans. And at the very last mile, not even last mile, just the final stage of delivering the goods, uh, it's a 
actual courier who carries the goods to the destination so then thinking about uh, the supply chain cost from this perspective would probably help and for mobility uh, example would probably be helpful here right uh, thank you saran let's uh, move to our next question this one is answered uh, this is from sanjay kumar chatterjee Chatter chatterjee pardon me and saran i'd like to call you back again because it's uh, addressed to you at present uh, we are using gps and temperature data loggers for our refer vehicles but there are multiple service providers who provide reports in different formats how to bring these data into a common format for better monitoring i think it's a great question and if i understand correctly refer vehicles are for refrigeration refrigerated vehicles and you have gps and temperature data and what i understand from multiple service providers is that maybe there's a very large fleet of vehicles with some of them equipped with uh, devices from one service provider and others with other service providers now the uh, question is what do you want to do with the monitoring aspect of it because i understand that the service providers themselves will try to provide you a certain level of analytical uh, toolkit alongside the hardware and alongside the data so you could either work with these service providers and at, i think at this point uh, bhagav and gaurav would probably be better equipped to answer this specific part of it but from your own uh, requirements what you can do is try to bring in the data into a, a pool or it's called a data lake if you will and then work with your internal team to uh you know harmonize across the different formats that you would need if you need it for just uh data analytics part uh, like data analytics applications where you're trying to see what the average is of a certain uh set of vehicles in terms of temperature maintenance uh, if you're trying to monitor the compressors on your uh, devices so then that is just analytics if you're going for real time things get a little more complex because then you need a lot of server side back uh, the like infrastructure to support that real time monitoring so it depends on the use case but in terms of how you can uh, work with multiple service providers or can have one or a could better way in that so so i would like to take it uh, from here so uh, what we can do uh, mr sanjay uh, suppose uh, you want to data in a common format and the data providers are multiple so you can i mean by using uh, a small technology you write a common i mean this is a little bit technical you write a common you know you write a common function and expose your apis to your providers and tell them to you know push the data into your api so that you can get the data from multiple vendors but at the end you store the data in your wanted format and then you can you know take the reports out of it normally in the logistic uh, in, uh, companies these things are happening because one logistic company has multiple vendors and every vendor has their own gps vendor but logistic company wants the data in a single uh, format or a single uh, screen so what they are doing they are exposing their apis they are exposing their api and asking their vendor to push the data into their uh, system so that at the end every all the data are in a common format at the common place i hope uh, mr sanjay uh, the answers from gaurav and saran uh, were clear to you and moving to the last question from biswajit uh, barua this is uh, i think more generic this is about what is status of implementation of adas solutions in fleet management systems for commercial vehicles in india so uh, biswajit uh, if i may take this up so there are two ways we can do this so one is uh, you know the inbuilt solution provided by the oem that you get directly when you buy the vehicle and of course there are off to market solutions and uh, which can be uh, procured and fixed uh, and these can be integrated into your vehicle management system also but uh, otherwise i am not very sure uh, what you mean by the status of implementation uh, it is uh, to a very large extent 
driven by individual choices of course the government of india uh, has also mandate mandated uh, many requirements and all those mandatory elements of the compliance automatically becomes 100% especially for the new vehicles uh, unless some panelists want to add uh, another view point to it we can move to the one and last question no okay so the last question is again one from vidin how does customer satisfaction and loyalty correlate with our profitability when using smart fleet systems uh ankit i'll take this one um uh, please go this is actually a a very good thought process so typically when people think of iot and smart fleet management etc it's looked at from a very bottom line perspective but in fact uh, it also contributes to the top line uh, i i can walk you through one of the classic examples that we've experienced as well now i'll take a, a shared mobility use case for example uh, over there customer experience becomes extremely important uh, with respect to the hygiene of these vehicles or their overall experience that they get by using that particular service in 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 one of those examples what we saw was there were a lot of uh, uh issues for the end user with respect to the final billing uh, there were multiple steps involved uh there were a lot of errors during the billing etc so what we did over there was that was a core problem again from this particular entity so uh, what we looked at was automating that entire billing process uh, in, in an error free manner which resulted in a superior uh, or a, a better than optimal experience for the end user which led to getting a slightly better market share for this end user as such so yes there will be a lot of customer satisfaction that can be delivered uh, but it completely depends on the nature of the uh, fleet that you are running the domain that you are uh, at what are the core uh, experience uh, parameters that your uh, end users focus on uh, you will have lots and lots of data that can be extracted and packaged into a, a solution which enhances the end user experience of of your product or service thank you so much bhargav i think that was the last question so uh, fabulous team i think uh, to all our panelists once again a very uh, big thank you from my side for extending the time and addressing all the questions that were asked uh, from our audience to our audience i really do hope that this uh, discussion and uh, panel was extremely fruitful to you as i mentioned earlier uh, the advantage of this online platform is that you can reach you readily have the contact information of all the panelists here and you can readily reach uh, out to them over linkedin and uh, connect with them for your for the queries and any business requirements that you may have uh with that uh, let me hand it back uh, to sakshi uh, for any closing remarks that she may have sakshi uh, over to you thank you so much mr avasti a uh, sakshi you're on mute if you're trying to talk so sorry um a very special thanks to you mr avasti for the way you combined the various interests of the industry and related those interests to the panel of experts and made this discussion very constructive a big shout out to our audience of course for their questions and with this we have come to the end of our webinar uh thank you attendees for extending your time and support to help organize this event and a very special thanks to our esteemed speakers for extending uh, their support uh, for this event we promise to be back soon with another exciting session and don't forget to join us for uh, our upcoming event india fleet show 2023 on september 27th at addison blue bengaluru and stay ahead in the world of fleet management i would like my team to play one last commercial video
Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye.